How to progress well? First, I have to tell you that this is a talk that is based on the learning outcome of Zhenang Qi Gong. Uh, after the talk a month ago, some friends asked, where exactly did Dr. Meng Pang mention about this uh, learning outcome? I said, I'm sorry. If you want me to dig out exactly where and when, I'm not able to do that. But if you were to use logical thinking, you would understand that what I'm saying is true. Yeah? So we are going to discuss about a few things here. Number one is uh, the uh, brief introduction about the important points in Zanang Qigong practice, the exercises in Zanang Qigong. Now, please take note that I'm not here to point fingers. Yeah, I'm not here to say that, hey, 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 no, 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 it's not like this. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying that, yeah? Just here to share some facts. Facts means reality, means something else, that even if you were to apply logical thinking alone, you would understand that this is true. Zanang Qigong is not a cult's practice. Well, we go around telling people that this is an open practice, right? So this is not a close practice, not a cult practice. Um, that means it is open to discussion. Use your wisdom to analyze whether what I'm saying is true or not. If you're not able to, to uh, find the articles or whatever, you can use your wisdom to think. All points raised here are based on the teaching of Zanang Qigong. Oh, all points raised here are based on the lectures and the uh, materials written or produced by Dr. Pang, right? Please use chat or, you know, in the mind, you want to use the mind, yeah, no problem, but make sure you, you mute yourself, yeah? Okay, here we go. Now, I think if you have done something like uh, uh, Tai Chi Chuan, Karate and all that, you know that there are so-called learning outcome, right? In Qigong, some Taoist form, you're supposed to transform the saliva into essence, transform the essence into qi, and then transforming the qi into spirit and return the spirit into nothingness. Now, whether this flow is correct or not is immaterial. Whether eventually you can transform yourself into nothingness is immaterial. What I'm saying is that the learning outcome is there. That means they tell you if you were to practice, you can expect that you're going to reach this and that, right? You go in martial arts in China. Now they have, they don't call it dance, they call it Duan Wei, which is the same as uh, similar to Dan, right? Um, there are nine Duan's. That means a nine Duan Wei, the nine levels, all right? Then if you take a course, academic course, if you take up uh, engineering, there will be minimal requirement for certificate or degree courses. If you were to graduate, you are going to have such ability, such knowledge. This is what we call learning outcome. Now, what about Zanang Qigong? What constitutes progress? Please understand that uh, over here, we're not talking about self-healing. I gave a talk this morning and then uh, uh, some friends asked, uh, why are you not talking so much about healing nowadays? I mean, uh, you know, on your website, you mentioned about the testimonials and all that. Uh, I'm sorry, to me, it's already common. I mean, it's already common, serious. Yeah, I'm not saying that 100% uh, all of those who come to me and then uh, they, they will get well and all this. No, that's not possible. People who come to us, they're either because of, uh, uh, they do not have a choice or because the people say that, the doctor said that, oh, okay, uh, there are no other tricks except to cut you up. Yeah, then they maybe they want to come and see us. So it means challenging cases. People come to see us. Uh, and there's no such thing as 100%. Yeah? Um, here, we are not talking about healing. We're not talking about self-healing. We are talking about progress. And what constitutes progress? What is progress? 
uh, last year, there's a friend who came to me and said this. Um, I actually discussed with her about extrasensory perception. And she said, my teacher said that it is not necessary for those who are at high level. The teacher is at high level. But the teacher said that for high level teacher, it is not necessarily for them to have extrasensory perception. Is that accurate? Is that right? This is a question. Okay. Do you think this statement is correct? My teacher said it is not necessary for those who are at high level to have extrasensory perception. Do you think this statement is correct? This is a question. Please provide answers. Yeah, not right. Anyone? No. Yeah, okay. Okay, the answer so far all no, 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 no. One straight down. Okay, good enough. Now, let's see why you say so. Okay. Look at the practice. Look at the exercises. What is the purpose of having the six levels? I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, understand that Zhenang uh, Qigong was formulated back in 1980s with the idea of having six levels. Level one is called lift chi up, pull chi down. Level two, body mind form. Level three, five one form. Level four, middle channel hun yuan. Level uh, five is middle line hun yuan. Six, transformation to oneness. Now, what has the arrangement revealed? What is the purpose of arranging the exercises this way? Yes, ESB is also felt inside our system. Yeah, thinking, body function. Now, what is the purpose of having the six levels? What has the, what you call the arrangement reveal? Yes, that is going from outside to inside. Inside to where? This alone, this arrangement, if you were to be, if you were to apply, apply logical thinking to look at it, you would understand that, hey, I'm going from outside to inside. I'm going from outside. What do you mean by outside? What do you mean by outside? Okay, when I do lift chi up, what kind of a exercise am I doing in lift chi up? What kind of a exercise when I do in lift chi up. Yes, I am practicing external chi, right? So we call it an exercise of external hun yuan. Our mind is what we call interacting with chi outside the body. Where is outside? Outside means outside. On the skin is also outside. On the pores of the skin, they are also outside, right? So when we do lift chi up, we perceive the changes of chi on the outside, okay? But of course, those, <laughs> those who are doing well, lift chi up can eventually practice to the extent that you feel it inside. External when can go internal because it is a play of the mind, all right? Oh, but we, we are not going to discuss this now. So lift chair, pull chair down. The main concern is about the chi surrounding me, on my skin, outside me. Body, mind, form. I'm going to practice of the chi interacting. My mind is going to interact with the chi in, on the skin, flesh, ligament, vessels and bone you can feel deeper now 
five one form you pronounce syllables and all this what do you do it is for your mind to interact with the chi inside the internal organ see i'm going deeper right and theoretically when you come to middle channel hun yuan it is when the internal organ chi that becomes so even that means your emotions and all that are really good and your internal chi is so powerful then they open up into a channel a middle channel right and the level 5 this middle channel get smaller fine become one line so middle line hun yuan and then eventually this middle line will just go out and then well transformation to oneness so you go from here you understand you are having your mind to go deeper and deeper into your body if you practice lift chi up you should be able to feel the chi outside the body if you practice body mind form you should be able to feel the changes the movement of chi inside your body let's say yeah? separate my fingers separate separate what is happening inside the body i claw my fingers down what is happening inside the body see so when i can feel the changes inside the body when i move my separate my fingers i claw down my fingers or when i you know i do exercise number 4 or when i arch down and stretch onto my urinary bladder channel i feel the changes inside that is that body my form yeah and then come to five one form now five one form when i pronounce a syllables it is not how beautiful i can pronounce it no it is what is happening inside when i pronounce half syllables what is happening what is happening when i pronounce anger to what is happening inside see which organ is is vibrating the chi of where the chi is moving see so if you are practicing correctly we don't want to talk about whether you are high level practitioner or low level practitioner if you are practicing correctly if you are practicing zhenang qi gong correctly and then you are following the sequence of this practice your mind would be able to penetrate your body deeper and deeper and deeper if you practice five one form and you don't even know what is happening when you get angry then you are not practicing five one form even though you can you can walk on uh, you know walk like a crane yeah you must know what is the essence of the practice the middle channel hun yuan middle middle line hun yuan and transformation to oneness not mentioned no no not much of uh, uh, what called stories about it so we're not going to discuss about it but from these three one two three the arrangement of these three alone you see that it is a practice that is bringing your mind deeper into your body if you're not able to feel what is happening inside that means your body mind form is not right you are not able to feel your emotions that you are getting angry huh? or you are about to get angry i mean about to get angry is a little bit demanding when you you are angry you are sad what is happening in you are not able to perceive that that means you are not practicing five one form correctly yeah so this is one one area now and then dr tang mentions about uh the levels of progress in zhenang qi gong so this is one way okay you go through level 1 level 2 level 3 you go deeper and deeper and deeper he also mentioned this i'm sure many of you heard of this before right but um, very few people would pay attention on to what exactly is behind all this Okay the first one is my think of chi and then my observing chi mind inside chi and my and chi as one 
So this one is when we are talking about qi. We talk about qi now. Okay, so let's say we talk about lift qi up. My thing of qi, what is my thing of qi? Okay, I push, I pull, ah. I think of qi going out. How to think of qi going out? Okay, this is day one. I just joined a class. How to think of the qi going out? I think outside. And then I think inside. Outside where? I think of the horizon. I think of the universe. I think of whatever that is far, far, far away. I think of that to bring out qi. Right? And I think inside the thing to bring qi inside. And in the process of using my mind, I think of qi. I think of qi sensation, the kind of a sensation that I have had when I was doing thought qi. Then, as I go deeper into the practice, now, the demarcation is not very clear. Eh? I, I think that many of you would understand this. Then, I practice, hey, when I push out, things are opening out. When I pull in, oh, things are closing in. So I am observing qi. Now I just observe what is happening. I don't bother. I don't have to bother about going out. Oh, horizon coming in. Oh, inside the border. I don't have to bother about it. I just observe qi. Yeah? And then mind inside qi. My inside chi, this is something like, uh, you know, uh, many friends uh, in our class, they felt it, they experienced it. That my inside chi, the mind is inside chi. So when the mind gives the command of go, you would feel that chi is propelling your arms outside. You give a command to pull you would feel somehow qi is drawing your arms inward. And then, as you go further, you push, everywhere is something like this. That the movement is not, the, pro the propulsion is not only on your arms or your hands. It's throughout the whole body. The mind inside qi. My and qi is one. This one, I can only explain theoretically. <laughs> yeah. My and chi as one means, I want to become chi. Then you don't see me now. <laughs> All right. Then I want to return. Then I return. You, you, you know what I mean? My and chi as one. Yeah. That's very, there's no difference between my and chi. No difference. Yeah. The ultimate level means my mind is completely in command. I want to be chi, I become chi. I want to form something out of chi. Say I want an apple. Apple is here. Yeah. Uh, so this is one level. Okay. And then this this is one based on chi. Then we talk about a practice that is based on body, physical body. My think of body. When you first start the practice in body mind form, what do you do? Okay, I'm supposed to push out my arms. You think of the body going out, right? We have already said before that uh, you practice when you are practicing body mind form, your focus is supposed to be inside of your body. I want to get my mouth. My attention would not be on the mouse, but my attention would be on the, how I stretch out, how I claw down to reach for my mouse. Mind is thinking of the body. All right? When I walk, I pay attention. Think of how am I walking. Then, a mind observing body. When you are observing your body, this is closer than than thinking of body, right? My observing body, you actually feel everything inside, clearly. Yeah? 
you move, you separate this. If you think of body, probably you think of the movement here. When you are observing, this one is more in detail, you can feel the changes inside. Okay? Again, the demarcation is not very clear. And then mind inside body, what is mind inside body? Mind inside body, when I gave a thought, when I gave a command that, let's say, uh, punch. Mind, no mind, fist, no fist. Within that is true mind. In martial art, they say this, right? That is when the mind is inside the body. It's a thing of that, it will just go out. It's something rather intuitive, something very simple, right? Mind and body as one, that is another level. Huh? Mind and body as one, it can be also something like, okay, I want to get taller by another three inches, and I get taller. <laughs> I want to shrink down, then I will shrink down, right? Again, this is theoretical, yeah? And from this, based on body, physical body, and based on qi, you would understand that this is also a way, a way of the mind to interact with qi or with body. And when we talk about qi, it is actually from one level to go to a deeper level. When we talk about body, it is also from one level to another deeper level. What have these pointed out? It just pointed out if you are doing it correctly, you are doing Zeneng Qigong correctly. That means your mind should be able to penetrate deeper and deeper into the body. Now, is it possible for those in the high level to have no ESP? No. If you are practicing something else, I do not know. If you are practicing what you call a Zeneng Qigong, no, that's not possible. Then you get into, we talk about the, the basic thing here, yeah? Because, well, we, we're going to advertise about our Lift Chi Up in Three Centers Merch, uh, uh, what you call uh, upgrading class, okay? Minimal requirements as laid down by Dr. Pang for level one, lift you up, pour you down. Initially, he mentioned four. Perceive the open close of the surrounding chi. I think most people are able to do that. Huh? Push, oh, everything is going out. Pull, everything is coming in. So, chi surrounding you is going, opening, closing. Control the open close of chi, let's say, yeah. Huh? I can use my mind to think that, okay, chi of my head is closing and opening. Oh, I do la chi. Okay, then I focus onto my abdomen. I feel my abdomen opening, closing. Yeah, that is control the open, close of chi. Control with what? Control with the mind. Okay, and then perceive that the chi directed to you. Let's say you are standing there. Someone would point behind you without touching you. Ah, uh, you know where is it pointing? See, so this is one, two, three. Then he said, number four, you should have your ESP develop. The first time when he said one, two, three, four, he said, number four may be a little bit uh, challenging, yeah? Then, a few years later, I think it was in 1990, 1999, he said it again. Come to think of it, it is not possible for you not to have ESP develop. ESP is extrasensory perception. 1999, he said that. Not possible not to have ESP develop. Then he explained why. He said, where are your nerve endings? Where are your nerve endings? 
They are on the outside of the body. They are on the membranous tissue. Right? Now, what do you do in lift she up? She is going out, coming in through where? Through the skin. So the nerve endings will become more and more sensitive. And because of that, your ability to perceive will become better and better. So he said, no, not possible not to have your ESP develop if you are doing lift chair, put you down. Minimally well. Yes, he said that minimally well. Right? Now, he's very fair. Then people ask how to achieve that level. It's printed, right? Nah? Oh, and also in 1999, this one I can remember very clearly. You just have to practice it slow, slow enough. Then the question, how slow is slow? How slow? How slow is slow? Anyone has the answer? This one, Dr. Pang made it very specific. He said, slow it down to one minute per push pull going in going out one minute so this is one cycle okay and then you do it half an hour if you are able to do half an hour here half an hour here is it you are going to have a esp yeah he said this and what did dr pang say about body my phone he mentioned two things very clearly. He said, number one, body mind form, you must be able to close your eyes and finish the exercise. All right? Yet you are doing it correctly. I mean, you close your eyes and then you do it wrongly, then that is another issue. Yeah? How exactly is ESPD5? We'll come back to this, yeah? Okay, so body mind form, you're supposed to, number one, be able to do that. Number two, you must be able to feel the changes in the body. The practice of lift chair up and body mind form, they're not the same. Not the same. Lift chair up is wholeness. You move one, everywhere moving. If you move one, only one place is moving, you're wrong. Let's lift chair up. Body mind form is different. Body mind form, you move one area, you move one area, so it trigger changes throughout the whole body. You can tell which one is the trigger. Lift you up, if you are doing it well, you are not able to tell which one is leading which one. I mean, if you want to tell me, oh, the lumbar is leading, that is elementary. That is elementary, okay? That, that is something that uh, you're supposed to learn within the first week, all right? If you go deeper into that, then you understand this is a whole, wholeness practice. You move one, you move your arms, everywhere is moving. Yeah? Five one forms? Five one form, again, you have to look at the essence. I pronounce what is happening inside? And it's not just the vibration of the organ. What happens to the emotion? When I, when I pronounce gong, what is happening inside? Not only the vibration of the organ, of the specific organ, but what is happening to my emotions? See? So these are things that normal people do not feel. You don't feel. I mean, you can ask normal people that you try to point behind them. Do you feel that? They don't feel it. You ask normal people that, okay, you do this, huh? you separate your fingers. Can you feel something else inside? They will tell you, no, you are nuts. <laughs> See? So what is ESP? ESP is extrasensory perception. 
extra means it is outside your sensory perception. Sensory re refers to the sensory organs, right? We see because of we receive impulses, all right, being uh, processed by our brain. So we see, we hear because sound wave enter it, hit our eardrums and then impulses go to our brain and then process, oh, this is the noise. Same thing when we taste, same thing when we touch, same thing when we smell. Extrasensory perception means it is outside the sensory organs. You pick it up directly with the mind. Yeah? You pick up directly with the mind. So when you are separating your fingers, let's say yeah, you're separating your fingers in uh, exercise number three, a body mind form, what is happening inside? You hear something else? No. You saw something else? No. You perceive it. So that is extrasensory perception. You, you perceive it without relying on the sensory organs. Okay? And then, what is the special characteristic of ESP? This is something very interesting. Okay? This is in the book on uh, extrasensory perception uh, on Chao Chang Zineng is extraordinary capability. What is the special characteristic of ESP? When you are able to perceive the changes inside your body, you will be able to perceive the condition of others. And when you are able to perceive the condition of others, not necessarily you are able to perceive the condition of yourself. Yeah, I say it again. Huh? So now I can feel inside myself. I check the patient. I can tell what is happening to the patient and what is happening inside the body. All right? Now that I can tell myself. But if some people, some of them, they are very sensitive. They can look at the patient. Oh, you have a problem with your stomach. Oh, your digestive system is very bad. Oh, you have a hole in your, you have an ulcer in your duodenum. You know, they can tell what is happening to the people. But they may not be able, may not be able to tell what is wrong with them. This is a special characteristic of ESP. Now, why this special characteristic? Well, that's why I'm asking, <laughs> why this special characteristic? <laughs> why? Anyone? Well, because all through our life, our attention is outside. Our attention is always outside. We look outside, we hear outside, we see outside, we taste outside, we touch whatever that is outside. We do not focus inside that much, even after we have started practicing Qigong. The outward inclination is always stronger. It's always and it's still stronger than what you call uh, inward inclination. Yeah? So it is easier to tell. It is easier to tell what is happening outside because of the natural inclination of a human being. But it is not as easy to tell what is happening inside us because simply the inclination is not there. So by the time that you're able to tell what is happening inside you, you will be able to tell what is happening outside. 
But if you're able to tell outside, which is what we call easier in a way, because there is better inclined that way, you may not be able to tell what is happening inside yourself. Yeah? I hope I'm not, uh, I'm not confusing you. Okay. This is a special characteristic of ESP. So there's no such thing as uh, uh, you, you, you don't know what is happening outside and then you said uh, I have reached high level. Not in Chinese Qigong. But then there's some of them who have practiced for years. They have reached a certain sensitivity, but they do not know how to use it. <laughs> they don't know how to apply it. Yeah? Uh, this is simple. Sometimes uh, a little bit of guy and then um, all this will develop. Okay, now we are talking about practice. What are the practice roots of Zilin Qigong? In the 1980s, level one, two, three, level one, two, three uh, were, were pushed, were published to the whole world. Okay, so lift here, port you down, body mind form, fire one form were there. And then late 1980s, uh, Dr. Pang came out with eight chi cultivation method. Yeah, eight chi cultivation method did not catch on too long. Not very fashionable. Not many people were practicing eight chi cultivation methods. Uh, and then came 1999 when the Chinese government said, okay, all private Qigong institution, please take rest. So it was a time when Dr. Pang uh, have to sit down. He has to sit down and think because during that, nobody, nobody invited Dr. Pang to give talk. He was not as busy as before. So it was a good time for him to review. So he did his review and he found out, oh gosh, you guys are my students. Your internal energy is so poor, right? And he introduced this, what we call straight leg sitting and Tai Chi Bow, Tai Chi Bow 1 and Tai Chi Bow 2. Uh, over the years, this series, straight leg sitting, Tai Chi Bow, has been somehow, who started it, nobody knows somehow recognized as the Zeneng Tai Chi series. Okay, so Zeneng Tai Chi series uh, was introduced in the year 2000. Then after that, Dr. Tang went, to, went into retirement. Then came 2016, uh, Dr. Pang introduced looking for Y2T, looking for your ENT, looking for the T of your central nervous system by chanting the syllable N, all right? From N, eventually it uh, somehow transformed into N, N, okay? Then came 2018 or 2019. 2018, only a few, and then 2019 was actually quite, uh, going out quite broadly. He introduced Zhong Zhi Zhuang, I call it ZZZ. Zhong <laughs> Zhuang. Or uh, in the Zhong Zhuang, there, there is also a big horse stand. I'm not sure that uh, this big horse stand is, uh, uh, is directly from it or somehow they prefer to add it in or whatever. I'm not too sure about it because I, I couldn't get the full lecture on big horse stand as introduced. Anyway, in Zhong Zhuang, this is again a form of standing meditation whereby you are supposed to position your, your arms in a uh, quite a challenging manner. Now, so there are so many practices. Which one to choose? Which one to choose? What did Dr. Pang say? Which one do you think is the best? <laughs> Life is tough, isn't it? Is it the conventional one, two, three? Or the one that in nine, uh, uh, what you call uh, 2000? I mean, itchy cultivation methods, I think most people will agree that it is no longer in the run. 
<laughs> it's no longer popular. Yeah, I forgot almost half of it. Um, then Zhenong uh, Tai Chi series, three legs of thing, Tai Chi Bowl. Uh, tai Chi Bowl one is something very good, Tai Chi Bowl two. Many people mistaken Tai Chi Bowl two as something easy and they call themselves injured. Yeah. Uh, Tai Chi Bowl one is very, very good exercise anyway. And then uh, 2016, just chant this. I think you can see the video on YouTube. Yeah, just chant this and you find your, your Y2T. Uh, this one, I think it will not be too fashionable. In fact, I said the same thing in 2018, 2017, and uh, the popularity is slowly uh, coming down. I'm not sure whether this is going to be another uh, form whereby uh, people will know the name, but not many are practicing, yeah, because it's not easy for you to chant this 24 hourly. Uh, then 2019, this uh, Zhong Zizhuang is again, I find that this is challenging, yeah. Now, which one to choose? Uh, Mother Nature Tai Chi is not is not Zheneng Tai Chi. It's not Zheneng Tai Chi. I, my understanding is that Mother Nature Tai Chi they they get some of the exercises out from Tai Chi Bowl too, and then blended into their their exercises. Yeah. Uh, now, so many forms of exercises there. Which one to choose? What did Dr. Pang said? Many times people ask me, hey, hey, maybe we should ask Dr. Pang, or maybe we should dig into his lectures and see that which one that he recommends. I will always say this, you know, today I'm selling you orange. So I'll tell you the orange is good, right? And then next week I discover something else. Oh, this plum is good. I'm selling you plum. I'm telling you that plum is good. But I'm not going to go back and tell you that, hey, orange is not good. You get what I mean? Yeah? When you have this Zheneng Tai Chi, when you have straight legs, you think, Dr. Pang said, okay, you just practice this. All right? Uh, if you are able to sit there for the whole day, I will smile until the corners of my mouth reaching the earlobe. And then when you have mm, this uh, chanting, looking for why to tea, you just practice this will do. If you can chant this 24 hourly, I'll be very, very happy. And then in 2019, when he introduced this uh, ZZZ, oh, this one that has verses inside, yeah? you have to go through the verses, all these things. Um, and then uh, you have to position your arms this way. Uh, he said that uh, you, from, from now on, you try to do this every day. Yeah? You practice this every day. Which one to choose? How do you recognize them? Don't ask me. I don't have the answer. <laughs> I cannot put words in Dr. Uh, Dr. Pang's mouth, but I will say this. If you look carefully, if you look carefully, yeah, we take one big round. Level one, two, three, the focus is on Hun Yuan place. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, maybe some of you did not really get it, right? But let's put it this way. We, we cut the story short. Level one, two, three is basically mostly on a Hunyuan place and a lot of relying on the use of the mind. Yeah? Uh, and then you have the uh, eight chi cultivation method, which is a little bit more brutal. The last four, um, out of the two out of the last four, they are rather demanding. Yeah. And then you have Zhenang Tai Chi, straight leg sitting, physical. They are physical. Okay, they are physical exercises. And then you come into Ng chanting, looking for Y2T. This time, it's completely not challenging where the physical uh, watchful body is concerned. You can just sit down there and chant for the whole day. Yeah. So you see, the the changes is quite drastic. And then came 2018 or 2019. It is about 
standing meditation. So I said, go one round, we're coming back to standing meditation. Uh, when I first read that, I was very happy. <laughs> I've said, said that since, I think about 15 or 20 years ago, yeah, that I said, if you want to practice well, you have to build up the internal energy. If you can afford, if you can afford to practice half an hour a day, be that half an hour, use that half an hour on standing meditation. That was my opinion. And if you go to my Yahoo forum, you understand that I've said that since how many years ago? More than 15 years ago. I've not changed. So I was very glad that we are here. All right? Standing meditation. Back to standing meditation. I mean, albeit the arms are held in a different manner. Yeah? Now, what is Y2T? Y2T is a T of the central nervous system. The T of the central nervous system is the one that allows us to have thinking process. Okay? So the T of central nervous system is important. Yeah? Uh, so when you you are talking about looking of Y2T means you recognize your Y2T. Okay. How to progress, how to reach minimal requirement. I always say it this way, that Zanang Qigong is an open practice. All right? And in an open practice, and if you look at the various changes there, you really have to make use of your mind to think what exactly that you want to practice. You have to analyze. Yeah? Over here, I'm not talking about healing. Okay? And if those who know me well, they will understand that when I talk to, when I talk about practice, I always look for things like efficiency. How to progress means I want to progress efficiently. All right? So there are learning outcomes. How to reach the learning outcome? That's what I want to do. I want it, I want myself to reach there as soon as possible. Yeah? So there are certain things like must we drill brutally? What should we drill? You see, some people like to do this push the mountain. Okay? They like to do this, and then many times you ask them, why do you do the push of mountain? Okay, let's say this is a question. You don't push the mountain, you hold your arms this way, you flex up your hands, and then you hold it this way. You hold it long enough. Why do you do this? Why do you do this? This is a discussion. Why do you think that you should do this. Train the mind, yes. A mind infiltrate the body, yes. It hits your heart, no. This is not what you want. <laughs> Heels, okay. Not so much. There are many other ways that is more efficient. Okay. Using your body to train your mind and vice versa. You train your willpower. Okay. I tell you a short story about this. Uh, back in 1999, when I first started to practice now that, I was always at awe with those teacher. It is very hard, strong internal and she otherwise damaged the body. Okay. I was always at awe with those teachers who have the ability to have, to, who have ESP. I mean, those days you were crazy about this, right? 
Then you said that maybe there's something else behind it. Then I read the article. 70% of those people who did this pushed the mountain for 90 minutes, all right? Within the course of two weeks, they developed ESP. Bingo. That's easy, man. <laughs> that shortcut. So I started practicing. Day one, oh my goodness, this is not that easy. Yeah, it's, it's painful. Never mind. I have time. I run my own company. Okay. Very simple. I can go into my office. Okay. Today close earlier. You can go now. I start to practice. Okay. Within one week, I went up to an hour. Second week, I was doing 90 minutes. 19 minutes for two weeks and developed that. Okay, here I come. Those days, you don't have USB drive. You don't have that. I have to buy a CD and put it on the computer, this uh, CD player and let it play. So it's not so boring, you see? So you feel all the pain, right? You understand what it means by your mind getting into your bones because you feel as if at the end of 90 minutes, you feel that a knife is scraping onto your, the bone inside. Yeah. So after two weeks of 90 minutes, still complete darkness. I did pick up something else. I did pick up something else, but I did not realize that is something that is that is very important until years later. But the fact remains that everything is still completely dark. Then I was very disappointed. Uh, maybe I push it up to two hours. Dr. Pang, there's one article he said two hours. Okay, go, two hours. Push it up to two hours. There's another week gone. Still complete darkness. So sorry. You are not even, you are not in the 30% or maybe you're not even the, the 30%. <laughs> you know, 90 minutes, 30% don't develop, right? 120 minutes, I don't know, maybe less than, less than 30%, then maybe about 10%. So you are the 10%, hopeless. It's very dejected. Then I get, uh, I have a duty to, visit my customers in other states. So I went out. I came back three days later and started doing that. Before I went off, when I did this, I can tell you this, when I reached 90 minutes, the first 45 minutes was boring. Was boring, really boring. You pull your arms there, nothing else. You can actually doze off, serious. When you can hit two hours, the first one hour, extremely boring. To the extent that I put the CD player on the floor. First one hour was very, very boring. You better listen to something else. Okay, the CD was about 48 minutes or something. Like that. At the end of it, I can use my foot to press replay. <laughs> Those days, they don't go round and round. Finish a the CD, they stop. So you gotta play it, you gotta press it, and then let it go again. Yeah? You younger people don't understand that. <laughs> now, my goodness, 30 minutes into that, pain set in. I got a shock. Hey, are you saying that you practice so long, you build it up so long, and you throw it away within three days? <laughs> Serious, I have no answer, and no answer. I start, started to read, you know, widely, and I have no answer, and I gave up, gave up on this. I know something is not right. This is definitely not the way for me to do it. And also at the same time, I found one thing else. That practice at the center is the first one, the only one and the last one, right? That practice of, um, you know, there's a group of, of uh, patients who challenge the teacher's training group and then I say, okay, we practice this, right? And see who else can 
and hold it long enough. Then Dr. Pang took the class two hours, everybody holding their arms that way. The first and only one and the last one was that one. I'm not going to talk so much about what happened yeah, to that. But I soon realized that this is not the right one. And then many years gone, 2006 or seven, somewhere around that, I realized what's the problem. And uh, I can actually hold up half an hour and dosing off without any problem doing that. Came 2008, I was even much more convinced. You know why? When you don't have internal chi to support you, when your membranous tissue are not there, are not ready, you do this, you lose it very rapidly. I just put it this way. Many of you have done body mind form. You practice a lot, band body arch back. You stop three days, you find that, oh, the flow is so far away now, all of a sudden. I was touching the floor. How come I'm not able to touch it now? See? Similar. If you have an internal energy, if you're ready, all right, things will change. Your practice will not deteriorate that rapidly. I practiced a lot of standing meditation during the period of 2008. 205, 6, 7, 8, 9, until, even until now, because I enjoy practicing it. Yeah, I have no problem. You can challenge me holding up the arms this way. 30 minutes. I've not done it for years. Uh, I'm not sure about one hour because <laughs> I've not done lately. For the past two years, I did not do anything like two hours or one hour. Yeah, but I'm quite sure 30 minutes because I did that a year ago. 30 minutes, no problem. Okay, so the internal chi that is important. And then came big horses then. Also, it was a flash in the pan. Why? Why? Because if you do not have that internal chi and you get into big horse then you're going to do it wrongly and you're going to have plenty of problems. You are locking down your own lumbar. Chi is going to shoot down. I have a friend who told me who came, he practiced that one, and then he came and see me, he said, he was in his six, uh, he was 69 or near to 70. He said that something is wrong with me. He said, I talk to you like this. There's no sexual thing that we are talking about, but sperm is flowing out. Semen is going out. What's wrong with me? I took a look at him. I said, what did you practice? I said, okay, I joined the class. And then we did big horse then. I said, show me your big horse then. I said, this is not big horse then. This is sick horse stand, you know, S-I-C-K. Because you are arching the lumbar to the front. You are locking yourself, man. He stopped that. Another friend in Germany also had the same experience. Yeah. See? So, Qigong is safe. If you were to do it correctly. If you are just having fun, Qigong is safe. Even you do big horse stand, you push the mountain, but you do it five minutes here and there. No problem, you are not going to get so much problem, right? But if you were to push yourself like big horse stand, I asked the man, how long did you, have you, uh, are you able to do that now? Oh, now I reach seven to eight minutes now. Already you get into a problem. See? So do you have to practice everything? Now, then I met a friend I, um, who who is crazy about practice. Very few people are crazy like that, like say practicing five hours a day. So she was enjoying herself with all the practices, right? In fact, there are two friends who enjoy doing practices like what? Like standing meditation, doing it three times a day, each session one hour, like doing big call stand and then the, what you call ordinary high standing meditation, right? One hour. You know, abdominal massage, two hours. There, there are people who are like that. So they asked me that, hey, I'm going to, I'm thinking of teaching, you know, because I find that this Zhenang Qigong is so great. I hope that I can do something to help the people. I said, good, 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 good. 
I promise you one day I'm going to talk about teaching. That's why I gave the talk this morning. One day I'm going to talk about this. I'll make, I'll, I'll get you in. And uh, <clears throat> then I told them this. If you are going to teach, you cannot go around and tell people to do only sending meditation or SLS. All the students, 99% of the students are going to run away. <laughs> Sorry, you have to pick up those things. You have to pick up things like, you know, big lat chi, you know, you have to pick up things like tai chi ball, lift chi up, body my form. You need to bring that. You need to pick that up. And I can guarantee you this one thing. You don't have to worry. Touch the ball, you touch the ball, everything will be dead because you have so much internal energy inside you. You do lift you up. Once you do it correctly, you are going to feel how your arms are being propelled. I said, within one week, you will be able to pick that up. Yep, I'm not joking. That's the importance of inner, internal energy. In those years, ancient days, if you want to practice Tai Chi, they will send you standing there for three years. Build up internal energy. I mean, if you, if the master look at you and say, wow, this guy is great, man. This is a genius, right? Genius, you got to protect, you got to make sure you got to groom him well. You push him into the right way. Stand, three years after that. Then you start to do whatever necessary. Yeah. So do you have to practice everything? This is a very wide topic. Yes and no. If you are going to teach, you have to practice. You have to know, right? Otherwise, how? Huh? Everyone come here every day, you practice then All of them will run away. <laughs> yeah? Uh, which one to choose? Which one to choose? One of the things that's very lovely about this, uh, what we call uh, external Kun Yuan, like Big Lachi, where you interact with the chi outside and lift chi up, is that you let the participant feel chi, experience chi rapidly, right? And then when they can feel it, they can experience it, you go it deeper. Yeah, so that's my opinion. You can think, you have to use your mind to think. Yeah, now then another question is, why am I not able to develop extraordinary capability? Why am I not able to ex to develop my ESP? Dr. Pang already said, if you are doing lift chi up, slow down. Slow down to one minute per cycle. Yeah? Now, so now you know how to slow down. Then the next question, do you realize that many people are not, many practitioners are not able to slow down? Common problems with those who are practicing lift chi up in three centers merge. You analyze and see whether what I'm saying is true or not. Many, they are practicing without aim. <clears throat> I practice because everybody is practicing. There's no problem with it. Like I said, we're not here talking about those having fun. I'm talking about those who want to progress. But if you do not put down an aim, then your practice will be empty. Your practice, uh, in martial art, they call it that you don't have the true mind inside. Your intention is not there. Okay? Posture and execution problem. Yeah. Posture and execution problem. Many people are not able to do lift chi up. Serious, huh? The push pull. The essence is in the push pull. Lift you up, the essence is in the push pull. Many people are not able to execute push pull correctly. I use the word correctly. Serious. If you were to show me that you are doing a lift you up this way, this is not good. Yeah? So, wrong way to use the mind. How are you supposed to use the mind? What do you mean by the wrong way to use the mind? Like, let's say, three centers merge. What is the purpose of three centers merge? What is the purpose of three centers merge? Uh, this is a question. To 
the build internal chi to stay inside, the build up internal chi opening up your lumbar, <coughs> build up chi, yes. Then the next question, how do you build up? How do you build up then? You have to practice, you have to practice by making use of the lower limbs to open up your lumbar, right? Are you paying attention onto that? Are you paying attention onto how am I supposed to make use of the strength of my lower limbs to open up my lumbar? This is the right way to use the mind. Yeah, four forces. Yeah, you have attended the course. <laughs> the four forces and staying inside. Yeah, you have to know that you have to stay conscious with the four forces. See, this is what I call the right way to use of the mind. It is, the rest are not important. Whether you want your arms here, lower a little bit, higher and all that, as long as you can have your shoulders relaxed and all that, as long as your arms are not stopping you from practicing your standing meditation, they are fine. They are fine. As long as the forces are there to work on your lumbar, they are fine. See, and this is the way that I said, this is the way to make use of the mind. What is the purpose of lift chi up? Why do I have to turn the shoulder? How do I turn the shoulder? Something like this? This is wrong. I'm not saying that this is not good. I said that this is wrong. Can I pull and feel the chi going in through here? This is wrong. Can I pull and have the chi going through here, one line going down to my lower thigh? This is wrong. What is the right one? See? And even this, I can tell you one story that this lady who took our class in February, she has hyperpressure. And I told her that your hyperpressure is fake, right? Because her posture problem. So uh, she came and then uh, outpatient twice and all that. After that, oh, very happy. I stopped my medication, my pressure. Oh, very nice now. Okay, stop. And then I don't see her anymore. Uh, she came a month ago, something like that. And she said, Mr. Wee, somehow my pressure went down. I said, why? You stop practicing? Yeah, I know, no, no. I joined an a on, online course, you know. A very good teacher, one of the blah, blah. Okay, 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 practice. And I say, that's not possible. Show me how you practice. Oh, now I learned something high class that I pull up my perineum when I do my push pull. And that's the problem. That's the problem. Why? Because when you pull up your perineum consciously during a push pull, what is happening is you will find that the lower limbs all tense up. Lift chi up is you move one, you can't differentiate which one is beating. You move your arms, you do a push pull. If you are doing reasonably well, everywhere is moving. You can't tell whether by way is leading huh? or the lumbar is leading or the hands are leading. You can't tell. But now you are tightening up your perineum, you're tightening up the lower body. The lower body doesn't move at all, just the upper body. So chi is rushing up. I said, good thing is that now you see the, what's the problem. You do away this, I'm quite sure your blood pressure will return to normal. Then she said, are you sure I'm zooming? <laughs> I said, I'm too lazy to argue. You go back and then you practice and then you come back and see me. If your blood pressure is still not down. Then I receive an SMS this, this afternoon saying, uh, a WhatsApp saying, I'm attending your class again, yeah? <laughs> see? Wrong way to use the mind. Don't move the requirement of exercise A into exercise B without knowing what are the essence. Inability to persevere. Inability to persevere. What do you mean by inability? If the posture is wrong, you find that it's not possible for you to do one minute per push pull. 
not possible. Why? Because lift chi up, lift chi up, or even body mind form, you are not working against your body. You are strengthening your innate ability. And you are making use of this ability to amplify, to amplify your exchange with the outside world. So let's say if you were to do your push-pull, if you were to do your push-pull like this, you're not able to slow down. Because this is not what is required. Yeah, and you're working against the natural function of a rotated calf. How are you going to persevere? Because the body, uh, the body is going to complain. See? And then, the importance of chi field. You know what is chi field? Chi field is when the teacher is taking you into practice. The teacher is actually telling you a story. Telling you what story? Telling you her experience or his experience. Her experience of, uh, or his uh, 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 experience of ability to perceive and all that's all out there. When you take a class, you can't say that. Mm, no, 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 no. This class, I will keep this. Uh, this one, I do not want them to uh, have their ESP developed. Okay? So this class, I'll tell myself that I shut off this one. I shut off this one. Shut off only AB for them. All right, just make sure that they can do it correctly. There's no way, no way to do that. That's not formation of chip field. You cannot be calculative when you're taking the when you're taking the class. Everything will be out there. That's why I said that if a teacher is good or not good, just look at the way they take the class. You understand? Yeah. See, because when you are taking a class, it's all out. Now, if the cheat teacher does not carry that information. That information will not be, be much, will not be much in the cheat field. Many people overlook the importance of this. Okay, you think it as an advertisement, we have our module two. Many people after practicing module two. In fact, a module two is a lot of talking, very little about uh, what you call practice. They develop ESP. Why? See? That's the importance of cheap food. Another thing is that the it, 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 we are going to have an upgrading course. And upgrading course is one and a half hours or two hours. We'll be talking about lift you up, right? Where we take you into practice, telling you the tricks of how you are able to do the push pull correctly, <clears throat> so that you are able to slow down, and then uh, standing meditation, right? So two hours, one hour, three hours, and then we have four lessons and then six hours on practice and Q&A. It's three hours upgrading plus six hours of these, uh, uh, what you call, practice Q&A Corina. <clears throat> we have just concluded the class, the feedback. Is that? It's good. Yep, I have friends who told me that they're practicing for years, never realized that things can change in such a efficient manner. You go to my Facebook, you can see the feedback. Right? There's one old man who told me that this is super efficient. He said he didn't realize that it can be so efficient. Yeah? So uh, if you're interested, sign up the course. Okay? You can contact me, you can write to me directly, or you can write to Irma. Yeah? Uh, what come next after this course? Then we talk about what come next. <laughs> okay, now some friends ask, what exactly is this big large chi? It is something very simple. We say, okay, we want you to do it. Do something very simple. <clears throat> But I'm standing this way, I'm sitting down this way, or standing this way, it doesn't matter, okay? I'm breathing in, I open up. I'm breathing out. I restore. Okay, breathing in. 
and breathing out. Taste the pudding. We try it out, okay? Just sitting down and doing it in a short while and see what exactly you can feel. You can also see what exactly is happening in the chi field. Yeah. Okay, get ready. Sit down relaxingly or stand up relaxingly up to you. Make sure you keep a good balance. Look out from the middle of the brain relaxingly. Feel as if you are looking out from the middle of the brain. You are looking out to the blue sky. Pulling your vision. Close your eyes and gently from the middle of the brain, think far away. Think of the blue sky on top of your head, all the way up. The blue sky beneath your feet, all the way down. Think of the surrounding blue sky. You are on top of the mountain, surrounded by the blue sky. Focus back now. Focus back to the middle of the brain. Chi of the blue sky will follow your mind to get into your body. Lower your focus down to your neck, shoulders, upper limbs, your thorax and abdomen, your thighs, knees, legs, and feet. Relax the whole body. Relax. Drop your arms deep down and then lift up diagonally. Lift up to your eye level and then we do the big open close. With your arms, with your palms connected inside your brain. Let your mind brightens up. Let your brain glows up. Like a beacon lighting up the whole world. Now lower your hands to your chest. Open up your chest to embrace the blue sky. The blue sky is you, you are the blue sky.
Blue sky is outside. Blue sky is inside. I am the blue sky, as peaceful, as magnanimous as the blue sky. Lower your hands to your Hun Yuan place, or the center of Middle Dantian. Open close to even out the chi of the internal organs. All the internal organs are peaceful, happy. Lower your hands. Lower Dantian. Open close. The place where we store the chi for cell metabolism. The lower Dantian is comfortable now. Sweeping all the surrounding chi. Press navel. Hands on the navel. Relax, relax. Put on a happy smile. Send a smile to all your, the cells of your body. Send your smile to all your friends. And they are smiling back at you. Relax, relax. Keep smiling. And open your eyes to greet the advertisement. Let's see our pantry centers merch upgrading. Paris time, 10 a.m. Saturday and all on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah? Uh, 12 to 25th, September 2020. Investment, 80 euros or 50 euros, depending on uh, whether you have joined our workshop before. Two lessons on lift up and three cents much, four lessons on guided practice and Q&A. Bonus practice sessions will be announced during the class, okay? We will inspect your three cents much through photos. That means you will take photograph of how you send, how you do your three cents much and send it to me. Okay, you have any question? Is there any question?
If no question, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.